Hello, my name is Nadia McLean, and today we'll be talking about the brain, the neuron, and how it all will affect Alzheimer's. First, we'll start with the brain. The brain is a part of the central ner nervous system, and there are four main parts. The cerebrum, which is 85% of the brain, the brain stem, the corpus callosum, and the cerebellum. First, with the cerebrum, it is a voluntary muscle. It helps us to talk and to dance with friends. It helps to store memories, feelings, emotions, and the right controls the left side of the brain, and the left side controls the right side of the brain, which is very important. Second is our brainstem. The brainstem connects the brain to the spinal cord. It's also the base of the brain, and it allows all functions of the body, including digestion, um, our heart, and even our urinary system. Also with the spinal cord, it is what allows the nerve impulses to travel throughout the body. So without that connection to, from the brain to the spinal cord, you would not be able to move or to feel and things like that. Next we have our corpus callosum, which connects our halves of the brain because there are two halves of our brain. Finally, over the cerebellum. The cerebellum will be very important when it comes to Alzheimer's and it helps with balance, movement, and coordination and is found in the back of our brain. Um, we now know what the brain is made up of, but now let's find out the basic unit of what the brain is important with. That is our neuron. Our neuron has a bunch of different parts. We first have our cell body. Our cell body is what contains our nucleus, which is just like any other cell. But what makes the cell different is that there are dendrites. Dendrites take information as neurotransmitters. So basically they receive all of our information that um, are given away by our axons. So what happens is the dendrite receives a signal and it will travel through the axon and the spaces in between the myelin sheath is our node of Ranvier and that allows for us to, it gives like short breaks and the myelin sheath is what helps speed up and protects, protect the axon and after that it then goes to the synapse which is what um, happens when the message is being sent. Now our neuron, why is it and how is that important to Alzheimer's? Well, Alzheimer's is um, the most common cause of dementia. Dementia in itself is poor memory and the difficulty to learn and that's all important because it damages our neurons. Alzheimer's, like I just said, is a neurodegenerative um, disease that causes the loss, of, um, the loss of neurons mainly to our cortex. Now, two other ways that our brain is damaged and why is because of plaques and tangles. Plaques occur outside of the neuron and that occurs on the cell membrane where there are amyloid precursor proteins. These precursor proteins help to rebuild the neuron after it's been damaged. Gamma secretase and secretase. The, these take away the proteins on the outside of the body and what it does is it chops it up and makes it soluble so that it's able to be um, degraded. But if beta secretase takes its place instead of gamma secretase or just regular secretase, it makes the protein insoluble, which means it's not able to break down. This is then called beta amyloids. And what happens is they're sticky, so they um, connect together a lot, and this causes beta amyloid plaques. These plaques um, get in the way of neuron to neuron signaling, which means that our brain isn't able to communicate with each other and get signals across. Now, that means that there's no signal, there's no function. This also can cause inflammation as well as um, a blockage in the blood vessels, which then can cause an aneurysm. Second is inside of the cell, and those are tangles. Tangles um, occur when the cytoskeleton it is reinforced or is held together by tau. When the beta secretase comes in and it um, makes the protein insoluble, it allows for the kinase inside of the cell to have that phosphate group and bring it to the tau. And once the tau connects with the protein, it will start to get away from the cytoskeleton while also pulling more of that cytoskeleton apart. This then in turn makes a group of tau, which is then called a tangle. 
What also happens is our cytoskeleton is then broken down because the towel is no longer reinforcing it and holding it together. This then causes signals to stop being sent and um, nutrients to not be sent throughout the body. After the neuron breaks down after tangles and plaques and through dementia, what happens next? What happens to our brain? Well first it's atrophy which means that our brain shrinks. The things that shrink are our gyri but two things enlarge in which are our sulci and our ventricles. But that doesn't help us at all, does it? So with Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's is split up into two different factors. It is either late onset or early onset. Another word for each of them is sporadic or familial. With sporadic, it is genetically and environmentally based. So it happens if you're, you have recent people in your family who's had it or based on your surroundings and things like that. Risks, you have a 1% chance if you are between the ages of 60 and 65, but you have a 50% chance if you are over the age of 85. Now when it comes to our genes, the APOE4, it is meant to help break down um, beta amyloid, but the difference between APOE4 and APOE1, 2, or 3 is that it's not as effective. So when it comes to the beta amyloid being broken down, it's not being broken down, which is instead allowing for the buildup of plaque. Another reason why um, a lot of things can happen, but not based off of the sporadic or the familial, is that when you're sleeping. When you're sleeping, your brain is um, flushing out all of its nutrients to the rest of the body and all of its fluids. And what happens is the cere cerebral spinal fluid, which is a part of our spinal cord, it comes in and it takes away all the excess fluid while also taking away all the excess beta amyloid. So when you're not getting the proper sleep, you're also allowing your brain to have that buildup of plaque, which is very, um, very bad and can lead to Alzheimer's. Once again, I am not a doctor, so this is not my specialty. This is just the research that I've conducted. APOE4 increases the more often that you have it. So if you have gotten it from one parent, it increases your chances versus if you got it from two parents, your increases double. Now the other type of uh, Alzheimer's is familial or early onset. This is dominant and it speeds up your progression. It also happens between 5 and 10% of Alzheimer's patients and it is an alteration of chromosomes 1 and 14. Chromosomes 1 and 14 is where the uh, gamma circuitase is created. This gamma circuitase um, determines the length of your APP. And with the greater length, it means the more plaques or the bigger the plaques are. Now, another, reason, another way you can get uh, Alzheimer's is if you have trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. With Down syndrome, it has an extra APP gene, which means you're more exposed and more likely to get it. People over the age of 40 with Alzheimer's are easily able to get it than people who don't have Down syndrome. Now, how are you able to detect Alzheimer's if the only way you can see it is through an autopsy and with the brain biopsy rather than just a regular autopsy? Well, in the beginning, it is very hard to see. After that, you start to have short-term memory loss. Wait, wait, what did I say? Short-term memory loss. That, things like that, where you're not able to remember your breakfast or what you wore yesterday, or things like that. Next, you lose motor function, so you can't t -t 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 talk. You can't talk, you can't move, it's not easy for you to function. Um, after that, long term memory loss, which means you can't remember who is this man standing beside you, but they you've been married for them for 20, 30 years. Finally, you become disoriented and you become bedridden, which means you're more easily disposed to sickness and. Um, Things like pneumonia or a very bad, a cold that normally you can get away with two days, but something that actually leads on to pneumonia and um, diseases like that. Now, um, since it has no cure, it is very hard for them to find um, medications that will actually stop the process of Alzheimer's. There are medicines and medications that will help to um, help symptoms, but there is no actual cure. Overall, the brain will not, will not be able to function if there is Alzheimer's because it is slowly degrading the brain and it starts in the cerebellum which is why you lose your memory first and why when people relate Alzheimer's to the brain they're like oh you lose your memory because it starts in the cerebellum where all of your memories and your cerebrum where all your memories are being held. 
Thank you for listening. My name is Nadia McLean.